Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another stock analysis video as well as earnings report and today guys we're going to be taking a look at a company that was recommended by Itai Cohen. I am so terribly sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, but I know that you have been asking for this company for a long time and I'm so terribly sorry I couldn't get to it, but we're getting to it now and hopefully I can do a pretty decent job to have to help you make a final decision of whether or not you want to invest in this company. So again, I'm so terribly sorry for making you wait this long. I really do hate that. Like you made a comment just a couple days ago being like, uh, hey, uh, remember, I do want Nucor to be a fundamental analysis. Thanks. So I'm so terribly sorry uh, for getting to this right now. So hopefully you like this video. So with that said, let's get started with the analysis as well as earnings report coverage of the company Nucor. Now, the first thing that we got to take a look at is obviously what does this thing do? Well, it's actually kind of cool. I personally love anything that involves like mining and this is not a mining company. But you can see that Nucor Corporation engages in manufacture and sale of steel and steel products. The company Steel Mill segment produces hot rolled, cold rolled, and galvanized sheet steel products, plate steel products, wide flange beams, beam blanks, and H piling and sheet piling products, and bar steel products such as blooms, billets, concrete reinforcement, and marchant bars. So as you can clearly see, their main thing is steel. They do not mine it though. By the looks of it, they just obviously manufacture it, you know, refine it, uh, you know, turn it into all these kinds of products. So nonetheless, though, they are still going to be susceptible to the steel futures price, which I'm going to show you guys right here right now. On the one year, they're down 17.54%. Year to date, they're actually up 4.33%. However, taking a look at this on the one year, they're barely up only actually a little bit more than a quarter of a percent. Now, the reason why I'm taking a look at this now, guys, is because obviously when it comes to these kinds of companies, remember that the price of steel does not directly. I believe that a new core, it is one degree of separation from the miners that mine, you know, the iron up because obviously you don't mine steel. You, you mine iron, then you refine it into steel. But nonetheless, the fact of the matter is, is that steel futures are definitely going to be very, very correlated to this kind of company. So just keep that in mind when looking at any kind of fundamental data when it comes to these kinds of material based companies. So let's get started with their earnings summary. EPS normalized actual came in at $4.89, beat by 60 cents. EPS gap actual $4.89, beat by 54 cents. Revenue $8.74 billion, which was a beat by almost $200 million. So now with that, let's jump into their earnings. Now, like always, guys, I will have this linked in the description below because this is not financial advice and this is very, very lengthy. I'm not going to cover it all. So I'm leaving it in the description so you guys can read it for yourselves if you so wish to do so at your own time, at your own leisure. And then I also have all these calculators I'm about to show you in this video available for free for the exact same reason. It's not financial advice. And please remember that every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. So let's get into these earnings. On the 26th of January, Nucor reports record annual earnings for 2022. At, already starting off like with a massive, massive right foot. Nucor reports safest and most profitable year in company history. That, wow, they should have added an exclamation point in the end of that history. Eclipsing prior records set in 2021. Eclipsing, I love that word. Fourth quarter and full year 2022 earnings per diluted share $4.99 and $28.79 respectively. Returned $3.3 billion of capital to stockholders through dividends and share repurchases. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Yep, I, I love it when a company just does that boom. We know what you guys like to hear. Unfortunately, they did not show the free cash flow, but nonetheless though, it's still looking, you know, I like this kind of setup that they got over here. And then take a look at this. Announced increased dividend for 50 consecutive years since initial NYSE listing in 1972. They are officially, guys, a dividend king. Oh my God. Seeking Alpha still has not that updated, but they just announced it. So 50 years, 
Yeah, guys, this is a dividend king right now when it comes to dividend. Awesome. Absolutely love it. So now we got over here, New Core Corporation today announced consolidated net earnings of $1.26 billion or $4.99 per share. Okay, we read this for the fourth quarter of 2022. By comparison, New Core reported consolidated net earnings of $1.69 billion or $6.50 per dilution share for the third quarter of 2022. Wow. Okay. So they went down a significant amount uh, from third quarter to fourth quarter, but it's still really decent. I mean, what really matters is not the quarter over quarter change. It, what matters is the year over year change. That's the main thing that you guys definitely need to take a look at. And I'm not sure if they actually show it here. I think it's in this paragraph from what I'm looking at. But nonetheless, we got over here for the third quarter of 2022 and $2.25 billion is $7.97 per daily share for the fourth quarter of 2021. So basically Q4 of 2021 was a lot higher than Q4 of 2022. Yet, take a look at this. For the full year of 2022, Nucor recorded consolidated net earnings of $7.61 billion to $28.79 per daily share, surpassing the previous record of consolidated net earnings of $6.83 billion or $23.16 per daily share in 2021. So that's the number that we really, really want to see. We want to use short term volatility. Basically, oh my God, Nucor went down from third quarter to fourth quarter. Therefore, the company should be worth less. But year over year, they are just eclipsing and that's exactly what you want to see i actually want to come down here now into the ceo's comment we got quote i am proud to report 2022 was both the safest and most profitable year for new core history this is the fourth consecutive year the new core team has exhibited record-breaking safety performance as we strive to become the world's safest steel company that's actually really good for somebody who has worked in the manufacturing as well as the mining sector man it's, it's surreal to see some of these safety precautions that some of these companies take. And this is for good measure too. You know, uh, kind of sidetracking over here. When, I kid you not, when you see a guy get a rope stuck to his leg and then just brought up mass, like around like 100 feet up in the air, that changes you, man. That, that really changes you. And yes, I have seen that. So, you know, the fact that they're trying to strive for safety is really, really a point of note. So he also goes on to say, in terms of profitability for the year, Nucor generated consolidated net earnings of $7.61 billion to $29. Okay, we got this already, which exceeded our previous record year of $23.16 per daily share, set in 2021 by 24%. Absolute insanity. These records are a testament of the world-class performance of the 31,000 Nucor teammates that live our culture every single day. Looking ahead of 2023, we will recognize that there is uncertainty about the near-term U.S. economic outlook. We're starting to see a number of demand drivers gathering momentum, including the reshoring of manufacturing, large infrastructure investments, and grid modernization. We believe new core steel and steel products with lower greenhouse gas intensity will be essential building blocks to our nation's clean energy future, security, and productivity for years to come. All right, so not too bad. Now, they actually have this separated by their segments, which is kind of surprising i'm gonna zoom in on this a little bit because it's kind of hard to see all right guys now let's come over here and take a look at each individual segment when it comes into their earnings so you can see that steel mills actually went down from what three billion dollars to 516 million dollars then for the steel products 451.7 million dollars to 1.1 billion dollars that came to the steel products when it came to the raw materials 44.71 million dollars to negative 141.8 million dollars and lastly when it came to the corporate and eliminations negative 617.4 million dollars to a positive 77.11 million dollars now you can see that this on the three month ended was a decrease from q4 of 2021 to q4 of 2022 however when it came to the 12 months that was a massive jump from 9.2 billion to 10.24 billion dollars so now let's come over here into the discounted free cash flow we got the ticker symbol for nue market cap of 45 billion dollars and a pe of 6.1 really really tiny with a current share price of 175 dollars and 54 cents Taking a look at this graph, guys, on the one year, they're up a whopping 33.09%. Very, very rare to see. Most companies are down on the one year. If they're up this much on the one year, year to date, 34%. 
Bro, no wonder you wanted me to take a look at this company, man. No wonder you wanted me to take a look at this company because this is this is absolutely insane. Imagine buying into this company when it was at $131. That's an insane rise. In fact, the 52-week low was 100 bucks. That's crazy. And actually, I'm very, very curious to see when they reached that $100. It was at around, let's actually see. Yeah, it was at around... September 23rd, September 27th, 2022. And their peak was $187.90, which guys, take a look at this range. We are at all time highs, if not very, very close to all time highs to $187.90. Now on the day, on the intraday, you can see that they went down 1.59%. However, though, we're still very, very close to all-time highs. Now, they do pay out a dividend of $2.04, which is a yield of 1.14% with a payout ratio of 7%, five-year CAGR of 5.85, dividend growth of 50 consecutive years. This is technically wrong. It's 50 because they just declared it. Ex-dividend date is actually coming up on the 30th of March. Payout date is going to be on May 11th and they pay their dividends quarterly. Based off of the current shares outstanding, this means that they pay out $517.14 million, which ends up being, guys, take a look at this. On the five-year average, they're still left with $2.81 billion. And as of their last year's true cash flow, it is $7.61 billion. Oh my God, guys. Take a look at these payout ratios. 6.37% for the last year's free cash flow and 15.55. Wow. Yeah, no wonder they can absolutely afford this dividend. And 50 years? Nah, they can afford probably 50 more at the rate that they're going with this kind of payout ratio. And now let's come into the fundamentals. It is time for me to beat up this company. Starting, of course, with the net income, guys. We got five years ago of $2.36 billion to one year ago of $7.61 billion. That is an increase of 222%. And if you take a look at this, from five to four to three years ago, consistently decreased. Increasing. Three years ago, obviously, it's understandable because that's when COVID hit. But then again, what happened four years ago, right? And then because after COVID, all the shortages started to happen. Take a look at that massive spike. $721 million to $6.8 billion. And then again, not a massive spike, but they did continue it, which is actually really, really good to see. From two to one year ago, $7.61 billion. Now, I'm giving this, unfortunately... 30%. Now, hear me out. Hear me out. The reason for this is because, first of all, they were decreasing from five to three years ago. And then on top of that, a massive, massive spike from three to two years ago. You know, I don't like my spikes. Sure, were they able to replicate it? Yeah, but that's assuming that steel prices are going to remain the same, right? Are going to remain as in high demand as they were as just after COVID. So, so that's a massive uncertainty right there. So therefore, I'm giving it a 30%. Not because it's in a negative, it's just because I just don't like the spikes. And unfortunately, the spikes continue into the free cash flow. Five years ago of $1.4 billion to one year ago of $8.1 billion. Increase of 476% with an average of $3.33 billion. Guys, we see the exact same thing. Five to four to three years ago, decrease. Massive spike from three to two years ago. And then, and then unlike the, the net income, this is even more of a spike from two to one year ago, going from 4.61 billion to 8.12 billion. So I'm giving this a little bit better, let's say 40%, I guess. But honestly, like it really doesn't fare any more better than the net income. Now, looking at the revenue, this one's by far the best one, mainly because the spikes just aren't as prominent. Five years ago, 25.1 billion to one year ago of 41.5 billion, increase of 65.6%. Again, decreased five to four to three years ago. There is a spike three to two years ago, but it wasn't as much as the other ones. And then they continue to increase it at a pretty good rate from two to one year ago. So I'm giving this a 60%. Looking at the total assets minus total liabilities, this one's looking absolutely perfect. Every single year consistently increasing. Kind of a small spike from two to one year ago, but... Aside from that, it's not really too bad. Average total assets, it is $25.85 billion. Average liabilities is $10.7 billion. Knowing this difference, we get $15.15 billion. Guys, I'm giving this a 95%. Looking at the cash flow minus the liabilities. Very, very interesting here because five to four years ago, they actually were starting to decrease it. But then COVID hit, so they came all the way down to negative $7.7 billion. And, they, and this is mainly due to COVID. But after that, you can see two years ago, negative 6.6. .6, and then one year after that, negative 4.8. 
billion dollars not bad so far as of one year ago they are below their average at negative 6.33 billion dollars i'm giving this an 85 percent looking at the shares outstanding this one is almost perfect five years ago of 305.6 million shares to today of 253.5 million shares that is a decrease of 17.05 percent and from the previous year to the current year there's another decrease of almost seven percent unfortunately i'm giving this a 97 because they did a tiny tiny increase in their shares from four to three years ago going from 301.8 million to 302.2 million okay fine i already know i'm okay i i can hear you guys typing in the comment section already that should not even matter you know what okay fine 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 i'll put this at a 100 it's not that big of a deal honestly i'll leave it at a 100 like it's barely anything and then they made it up you know the following three years so 100 for the shares outstanding and lastly for the cash equivalents currently they hold 4.28 billion dollars with an average of 2.75 billion dollars so coming over here into their overall grade, net income 30%, free cash flow 40%, revenue 60%, assets minus liabilities 95%, cash flow minus liabilities 85%, shares outstanding of 100%, overall grade of 61% biggest problem guys it is the net income the free cash flow and the revenue not so much the revenue but just the net income and the free cash flow not because of anything major though the concern of five to four to three years ago consistently decreasing is a problem for me but my main issue is the spikes honestly then again though if the spikes if you guys know why the spikes occurred right um and you think that they're going to continue to grow in the future well, this might be a lot higher than 61%. And now let's come into the projections, the target share prices. And, um, wow. Um, if you guys are watching this right now, I have not inputted a single thing. Not inputted any revenue or predicted share buyback, guys. The share price, $655.80. Wow. Okay. So... You know, current share price is 175. This is this is looking like a really good buy. Now, let's input in some numbers and see what actually happens here. So let's come over here into seeking office growth tab. We can see that the forward is estimated at negative 4.6. Now, normally I wouldn't do the negatives, but I'm going to entertain this. So let's actually put this at let's just say at negative seven. Let's just say that again, they're tied to the steel futures, right? So let's say negative seven. For the low assumption let's go with i don't know let's just go with like negative let's go up by three let's go with negative four and then let's go with negative one when it comes to their revenue growth and for the predicted share buyback i don't think that they'll be doing 17 again in the next what five years so i'm going to say roughly i don't know i'm, I'm gonna say roughly at around like uh three four and five percent for each one and um well guys with this we get the target share price is not just for debt. Obviously, with a recovery that would turn 10% across the board, we get $522.04 to $665.31. Target share price is adjusting for debt. This actually comes up by around $8 to $530.90 to $674.35. Now, adding a margin of safety of 5, 10, 15%. This is $451.26 to $640.63. Wow, those numbers look ridiculous. And honestly, I don't know what to believe here. Because the reason why I believe these numbers are coming out this way, it is because of these massive spikes, especially when it comes into the net income. That's a massive spike going from 721 million to 6.8 billion. Yeah, that's a massive spike. And even even the cash flow, 1.15 billion to 8 billion. Yeah, that's a massive, massive spike. So I you know it's 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 weird because like their pe is only 6.1 but then they have a lot of spikes but then they also don't have that many shares outstanding to begin with they have been buying back I, i'm half tempted to believe that these things is, are, are actually kind of true honestly now as you guys saw me input every single number you guys saw everything change right so you know this is the case that i personally do not know exactly where to 
put this company at because of the fact that there's this massive outlier. So this is the case where I would just go to book value, which doing so actually shows us a massive difference. Now, currently when it comes to the book value, this thing should be worth $72.64. And looking at the tangible book value, it's $44.07. So yeah, I um I just I just do not know because Again, when it comes to these companies, they are very much tied to their respective commodity, to the hip. And the reason why they did so good, you know, two and one year ago is because, well, demand for steel was sky high. Will that continue? I don't necessarily know. That's why I put these negatives over here. But even with those negatives, 522. Now, we haven't seen anywhere close to these numbers at all, if I'm not mistaken, looking at the overall graph over here. Uh, I believe that that, well, on the 52 week high, it is $187. But if we come over here to the, yeah, like it has never gotten to that point ever. The highest it has gotten is $187.90. So obviously, this kind of free cash flow isn't telling me what the share price is going to. It's telling me the intrinsic value of the company. And based off of that, guys, well, it's telling me that this company should be worth very, very high. Now, if you guys believe this or not, that's really up to you. I, It's kind of putting up a red flag for me, honestly. But that's why I have all of this available for free. All these calculators are available for free. Uh, I have the earnings report linked in the description below, just so that way you guys can make your own sound decision for yourselves. I'm just here to give you my opinion and, you know, what I would do in this scenario. So from this one, I, I, I just think it's too difficult. I think, question mark, I do like my mining companies, I do like my material companies, but I just think this one is a, just a little bit too difficult for me, but again, if you guys like it, uh, you know, please read the earnings report, link is in the description below, have all these calculators for free, even the dividend tracking sheet, make your own decision for yourselves, all we're asking for in return, guys, is just like, subscribe, comment, it really does help you with the algorithm on YouTube, so thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for everybody who comments, to who subscribes, who likes, who just interacts. We th thank you all so much. We really, really do appreciate it. And now let's actually come take a look at this dividend of $2.04. Not a big yield, right? 1.14% if I remember correctly. Putting in $5,725. This nests us an annual dividend of $66.53. So not even, it doesn't even get close to 100 bucks, right? But dividend king, really low payout ratio they might continue to increase it most likely they will continue to increase it in the future so that is some upside when it comes to this and if you again if you believe that this thing should be worth 522 dollars at the lowest point for this this kind of free cash flow that is a massive massive gain if i look back okay i'm gonna save this for the end but I'm just, okay, I'm just gonna say that for the end. Let's go into the options chains when it comes to this company. So, looking at the options chains, guys, the first thing I have to point out is that this has a lot of liquidity. For start, look, just look at all these. We got expiration dates for March 10th, March 17th, March 24th, March 31st, April 6th, pretty much every single Friday of every single month. So, that's really, really good liquidity overall. And we got a lot of options chains overall. Like, take a look at this. Oh my God. Now, looking at the March 10th ones, if you wanted to sell a put for this, guys, you would get a really good solid premium at around the $172.50 mark, as you guys can see right there. However, that is cutting it close to the current share price of around $175.54. Now, when it comes to the calls, this one's interesting because, well, they don't pay out a big dividend. So this may be a case that you may not want your shares to be taken away. Well, um, you know, I, I would like for this thing to go higher into the 500s, but it does not. Nonetheless, though, if you do sell a couple covered calls over here, you will get around $35 for a $182.50 strike and up to $18 for 185 Looking at the other expiration dates for March 17th, we can see that the premiums actually get a lot bigger. For starters now, $107 for 165 strike, and we still have liquidity. I forgot to mention that pretty much this thing has liquidity all around. Like, look at all this volume. And even for the calls, oh my god, take a look at this. $335 for a $177 strike for March 17th with liquidity as well. That's absolutely insane. So, yeah, this company is looking really, really good overall when it comes to the options chains. It's actually just looking really, really good overall, except for my overall grade that I gave it a 61%. All in all, when it comes into new core. Okay, here, here's what I wanted to say. I put the freaking share price at $500. If this thing, I kid you not, 
if this thing pulls a Crocs, where I saw Crocs at $74 or, or something like that, and my my stock analysis says it should be worth like 300 and then I kid you not, I see it now 125 and I think the highest was like 137 or something crazy like that. If this thing in a couple months jumps to like $300, I'm going to lose it because I, I cannot, wow, that is such a good call, it's not even funny, so... We'll see what happens with that. Obviously, that's not me telling you to put money into it. I'm just saying that would be insane if I actually call that right. But anyways, guys, that pretty much does it for this video. Like, if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help out with the algorithm on YouTube. You guys can follow us on the YouTube sites. Link in the description below. So with that said, peace out. I will see you all in the next stock analysis video as well as earnings report.